So, <laughs> so now we started recording. <laughs> we missed the blurb, but that's okay. So I think we're recording this today because it's been a while since we had a meta session and it's nice to offer this to others as well. So I'm not going to retell what I just said. So for those who are listening later on the video, um, just go along with what we do here and anything that works for you, great. Anything that doesn't, just let it waft over your head and just practice in a way that is nourishing for you. So closing our eyes, if that's good for you. Maybe I feel like taking a deep breath myself and a long exhalation that can help us settle into the moment, into the body. Making the out breath long, almost like a sigh. Imagining all the tension just dissipating. As so though your body were made of a solid block of butter straight from the freezer or the fridge. And with every out breath, it starts to soften and melt. You might notice areas in the body where there's some tightness or tension, where there are maybe habitual patterns of holding on, often around the brow, the eyes, the jaw, maybe the neck or the shoulders. places we most identify with the sense of self. Many of us live in our head, carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. You might want to roll your shoulders gently. And feeling the ground beneath you or the chair, the sofa, <coughs> feeling the contact points of the body sense of gravity, of weight, of groundedness. Checking those sensations. Maybe pressure, heaviness. Maybe you notice your limbs are squeezed or squashed. Compression between your buttocks might be evenly distributed or not. And now's the time to make any adjustments if you can. To enable your body to feel as at ease as is possible. We're not here to force our bodies into a certain shape or push them around. So this is the beginning of loving kindness, really listening to your body and responding by giving it space, making it comfortable and at ease. And just continuing to scan the body with mindfulness and kindness. To use a metaphor, mindfulness is like the light of the sun. It illuminates whatever it shines upon. 
bringing this present moment into sharper relief. And the kindness goes hand in hand with that mindfulness, like the warmth of the sun, it cannot be separated. Relaxing, soothing, caring for whatever you experience in this body and mind. You might even imagine yourself basking in the light and warmth of the sun, just receiving this kindful awareness. Just allowing things to be. Noticing how good it feels to be kind, to be present for yourself. Connecting with that intention of love and kindness that is there within you. The fact that you've come here today shows that you really do care for your own well-being. However you judge or evaluate yourself, there is metta, there is love and kindness, the well-wishing toward yourself. See if you can connect to that and allow Allow that perception to uplift the mind. Sometimes it might help to connect to any pleasant sensations in the body, or neutral sensations. If your heart feels open today, perhaps in the area of the chest or maybe in the palms of the hands or the skin in general, the surface of the body sometimes feels tingly, warm, soft. Just allowing the awareness to be very relaxed and gentle, light. And if it works for you, you may start offering yourself intentions, thoughts, well wishes of love and kindness. Such as, may I be happy. May I be free. May I be healed. May I be at peace. So these are phrases that I use quite regularly, but see what resonates for you, what you most wish for yourself. Maybe health, contentment, safety or ease. And imagine each phrase like a gift that you offer to your own heart. Repeating phrases clearly, calmly. And most importantly, listening 
in the space between each phrase to where that love and kindness, that intention is pointing. So the phrases are just like signposts. And we listen with kindfulness, allowing the heart to follow in that direction. And keep it very gentle, don't make it like work. Just enjoying receiving your own wishes of love and kindness. Being very patient, just like with all kinds of meditation, the mind will wander away, become distracted. This happens just smilingly. <clears throat> Reconnect with your intention. Perhaps even put a small smile on your face. And connected to the meaning, once again, offer yourself these beautiful wishes of loving kindness. Finding the right rhythm and pace for you.
And when we practice metta, sometimes we might notice a resistance, even an irritation arising. That's quite natural. Because metta is an antidote to ill will. So it shows us sometimes where we're where our aversion to ourselves is, what the obstacles to the loving kindness, where they lie. So whatever arises for you right now, See if you can embrace it with an attitude of acceptance, even welcoming anything unwanted, any unpleasant experience that might arise.
noticing any pleasant sensations in the body or neutral sensations that may be arising. Even the smallest hint of well-being and ease. Very gently extending thoughts, feelings, emotions of loving kindness to everybody sitting here together in this Zoom room. Imagining your unconditional love radiating from your heart, from every cell of your body. Like a soft golden light. Touching everybody in this room, surrounding them, suffusing them with thoughts and good wishes of loving kindness. If you wish, you can accompany this by the phrases, may we be happy. May we be free. May we be healed. May we all be at peace. And as this metta is shared between us, it becomes more powerful and intense and starts spilling over from the place you're sitting into the area nearby, through the doors, through the windows, down the streets, to beings that you know who come to mind. Beings who you don't know. People who right now may be happy, laughing together, perhaps seriously ill, struggling alone. People living in the streets cold, confused. People arguing with their partner or their friends. All beings in your own area your own country, 
and even beyond, spreading outward and unbounded to all beings everywhere. Human or non-human. <clears throat> visible or invisible. Far or near. All beings desiring happiness. Sometimes finding that happiness. Sometimes stuck in a cycle of negativity. Or a situation full of pain and fear. This could be ours at any time. All beings. Just like me, all beings desire happiness and peace. All beings recoil from pain. May our practice, our combined loving kindness, help heal the wounds of the world. So that even for a moment, people's suffering ceases. May all beings feel that somebody, somewhere cares. Imagine this whole beautiful planet Earth starting to shimmer with our combined loving kindness. As though each one of us were a little golden sunbeam and all those golden rays are joining up Stretching from Christchurch <clears throat> to Ohio, to the Isle of Wight, Sweden, France, England, where we all come from, all the people here in this room. Imagine our loving kindness stretching outward, and filling this whole universe with kindness, with care peace. Allowing the heart to open to that possibility of unconditional love. Just allowing yourself to rest in loving kindness. Allowing any being who comes to mind to enter into this field. Allowing yourself to relax and feel held.
And if someone special comes to mind or someone that you know is having a hard time, allow your loving kindness to suffuse them, to zap them with power metta. Imagining them in front of you, smiling, happy, well. Glowing with a golden light as they receive your loving kindness. This loving kindness that's universal, that's simply being channeled through you. All the goodness all the goodness of universal love and kindness, bathing this person in a golden glow, relieving any pain, any fear, anxiety, relaxing their body and mind. Wishing them the highest happiness and peace. Complete freedom from suffering. This being could even be yourself. Now, gently allowing any perception, images to fade away, gathering this beautiful loving kindness back into your body, into your heart, sensing yourself sitting once again on your seat or on the ground. Taking a couple of moments to acknowledge the beauty of your practice, this beautiful gift that you've given to yourself. Expressing a sense of gratitude toward yourself. Well done for showing up. Sabe Sata Sabe Prana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pugala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariyapana Sabae Tio 
Sabe Purisa Sabe Aria Sabe Anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Vini Padika Aweva Hon Tu Abya Paja Hon Tu Aniga Hon Tu Sukiatanam Parihalantu Dukha Munjantu Yadalada Sampadito Mawe Gajantu Kamataka For those who wish and who know our big sadhus, we can do the three big sadhus to end. Sad. Sad. <laughs> Smile. Sad. <laughs> well done. Super. <laughs> mm. Ajahn Ram usually makes people do it at least once or twice to get it really proper. <laughs> but you did pretty well, even though I can't hear you. I think that was quite pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the most important part is the ha ha ha. So <laughs> this is uh, something that comes with practice. Yes, we're not here just to meditate. <laughs> We also had to learn to laugh, even when things are not going so smoothly. So lovely to see you all. And there's 10 minutes left. I do have to go quite promptly today, but I wanted to give a little bit of opportunity for any feedback, any comments, questions or complaints. And uh, yeah, how you find the practice or anything else, even unrelated to the practice that you might wish to share. Uh, we can continue recording, but hopefully it's pinned to me and your face will not be visible. If uh, you don't wish your voice to be recorded, you can write it in the chat box, but we only have 10 minutes. So uh, yeah, hopefully there's something to share. Anybody would like to, you can either stick up your virtual hand. We seem to have a raise hand button special for that. Uh, or you can write it in the chat box. And please don't be shy to say if something doesn't work, because uh, sometimes, you know, we may, I don't know, overdo things or expect unrealistic results. <laughs> and sometimes it might be, you know, just not something that works for you. There might be another way of practicing loving kindness that would be better. So John says, thank you all. Oh, beautiful, calming meta to all beings. So nice. Mm -hmm. I think Janice, he wants to say something. Thank you very much, Marabha Chanda. I today I can go to bed peacefully because I had a very good metta meditation meditation. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Oh, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu to you for your practice and for practicing metta. So late in the night or the next. Oh yeah, it's the same day, but it's it's the end of the day for you. So end of yeah. the day for me, yes. And I'm, yes. I'm looking forward to all the other programs now from wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Very good. So please have a lovely, wonderful sleep Thank and you uh, take all those good meta vibes into your sleep with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great, great. Uh, meta is a really nice thing to practice before bed. Like you don't have to come to a whole hour long session, but even just lying in the bed and 
you know, connecting with your well wishes for yourself or for others, maybe if anything's still niggling you from the day, you know, you can just practice a few minutes of loving kindness meditation, just even saying the words it might seem superficial, but it's actually directing the mind in a wholesome way. And, uh, you know, the Buddha says again and again, particularly in uh, one of the suttas called the Vitaka Santana Sutta about overcoming unwholesome thoughts, or actually it might be the previous one, the Dveda Vitaka Sutta about the two kinds of thoughts. He says that um, it's so important because whenever we have a thought of loving kindness, at that moment, it's not possible to have a thought of ill will. And furthermore, he says that whatever we incline our mind towards becomes basically the inclination that we move in again and again. So the more we can generate these kind of thoughts, these thoughts of loving kindness, the more our mind will naturally incline in a wholesome way. You know, you might find that something happens in the day and where you normally say, oh, for goodness sake, woman, you know, this is how we talk to ourselves or for goodness sake, man, <laughs> you've done that again. Can't you get it right? You know, and suddenly you realize, ah, that thought didn't come. Actually, I, I laughed at myself. I said, oh, never mind, just try again. You know? And this is a result of the practice of loving kindness. You might not feel anything in the actual meta session, although I'm sure you all did, and I felt something from all of you. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's interesting. You'll find that it will start to have its results in your everyday life. It may even come to the rescue just when you need it. So the secret of success is the continuity and the persistence and the regularity, right? So making some time every day for metta, for loving kindness practice, even if it's only five minutes before you go to sleep and maybe when you wake up, yeah, you set your mind off in the right direction for the day. So Anne said it was reassuring that sometimes when you start metta, there can be a feeling of irritation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it's almost like it's, because metta is the opposite of ill will, it's almost like it shines a light on its opposite. You know, you, you immediately see what the obstructions to it are. And that in itself is incredibly helpful because we don't know that we're walking around with irritation and kind of contraction. And, you know, sometimes the heart's just kind of shut down. We don't really realize it until we actually come to a practice that attempts to open that up. And then we see, oh, yeah, I do have a sense of like coldness or maybe irritation or shut downness, contraction of the heart. So Rachel's asking, is inclining the mind the same as intention? In a way, yes, I would say so. Yeah, in a way, yes. Like whatever we intend, everything comes from intention. The Buddha said, you know, that thoughts, are, well, actually not even thoughts, intentions, like uh, chetana, right? Chetana aham, kamam badami. It means uh, intention is karma, I say. You know? The Buddha actually defined karma as intention. And karma is action of body or speech usually. So it starts with the intention. I mean, even intention is karma, but it's it's fairly weak until it results in actions of body and speech. So if we have a good intention, it's more likely that we'll have wholesome acts of body and speech, right? And if you can catch your intention and you see, oh, this is an unwholesome intention, then it's not going to result in unwholesome actions of body and speech, which would create further bad karma you know, it would create more suffering for you, let's say, and for others as well. So, yeah, I mean, you could say it's the same. You could also say that the inclination comes as a result of the intention. Certainly everything starts with intention. So, and then the mind follows in that direction. So it tends to lean in that direction, the stronger the intention becomes. So if you have, you know, lots of thoughts of ill will, then you're going to be leaning in the direction of, say, anger it's going to be easier for that anger to arise, especially if it's around, say, a person or a situation that you're just resisting. And then you see them and, woof, you know, I don't like this. So, but if you're inclining, if you're intending thoughts of loving kindness, the Buddha says in public and in private, so we have thoughts of loving kindness towards people in our lives, even when they're not around, then when you meet that person, you tend to relate to them with a little bit more softness and gentleness because you've been holding a, 
a beautiful perception in mind. So yeah, they're very close, I would say, but the stronger the intention, the more it naturally moves in a certain direction, it inclines in a certain direction, just like um, the river Ganges inclines towards the sea. So it's gradual inclination. Yeah, I hope that makes some sense. But these are deep questions and these are really practice questions, I think, that you can hold in mind and continue to explore. You know, it's not that there's um, necessarily an answer that someone else can give. It's more like something to inquire into yourself as your practice develops. Yeah, really great question. <laughs> so lots of lovely thank yous in the chat box. And I think it's probably time to say goodbye. So our next session is probably the Wednesday chanting, I think, next Wednesday. So it's back to Wednesday. It was only last week. I was uh, property viewing in Stroud. So now it's back to Wednesdays. And then there'll be a session on Sunday. It'll be the usual um, Zoomy bikini. <laughs> it's usually a Dhamma talk, but I'm staying with a friend and I don't want to have to think too much. So I'm making it a guided meditation and a Q&A. So I hope you have questions because whenever we do a big session, like with the, you know, the Vesak session, we have like about three or four times more questions than we can answer. So then I think, okay, we dedicate a session to Q&A and then I say, any questions? And everybody's like, <laughs> so if you can't think of a question on the day, think of one beforehand. <laughs> and any question is welcome, no matter how. I don't know, sometimes people judge even their questions, you know, but no question is silly and no question is irrelevant. It's all important stuff. Okay, so we now unmute everybody. And if you wish, you can wave goodbye and say goodbye. We can hear your lovely voices. <laughs>